Good morning, Grade 7 Sampagita. How are you today? Are you doing well? All right, that's good. So yesterday, we'll talk about the measures of central tendency. Can someone give his idea? Can someone give his learnings about the topic yesterday? Okay, thank you so much. So, measures of central tendency is a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within a set of data. So, from now, we will be tackling a new lesson. We'll be uncovering a new lesson. But before that, we'll have a game first. It is called a word puzzle. So you will be guessing a word out from a jumbled letters. So are you ready? All right, let's begin. So we have here the word number one. So I'll be giving you uh, five seconds to guess. So guess the word. All right, our first word is median. Do you guess the word? Okay, let's go to our word number two. Okay, so our word number two is mean. So mean next so our word number three for the word is mode okay congratulations so that's it for uh this game so with that game uh do you have an idea of what we will be going to discuss for today? All right, so just simply those three words, so those three concepts. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the three important math concepts called the mean, the median, and the mode. Mathematics often deals with data sets. The data sets are often just collections or group of numbers. These numbers may be the result of scientific measurements or surveys or other data methods. For example, you might record the ages of each member of your family into a data set, or you might measure the weight of each of your pets and list them in a data set. Those data sets are fairly small and easy to understand, but we could have much bigger data sets. Say, for example, the cost of every item on a store or the COVID cases of each barangay in Bohol. Those data set will contain a lot of different numbers. And if you had to look at a big data set all at one time, it would be pretty hard to make sense of it. But that's where the mean, median, and mode can really help us out. They are three different properties of data sets that can give us useful and easy to understand information about a data set so that we can see the big picture and understand what data means about the world we live in. That sounds pretty useful, huh? Here's our learning objectives of this lesson. So first, define mean, median, and mode. Second, develop an understanding and familiarity with the steps in finding the mean, median, and mode. And the third, Appreciate the concept of mean, median, and mode in the world we live in. Now that you have known the, the learning objectives of this discussion, so let's proceed on the proper discussion. So our topic for today is all about the three main measures of central tendency. So these are the mean, the median, and the mode. Who among you here are familiar with these terms? 
Do you have an idea about this concept? So, let's, uh, in this lesson, we will be uh, discovering all about these three measures of central tendency. But before that, we'll have a vocabulary review first. So, um, we have here terms, sum, and addend. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. And addend is the numbers you added together to get the sum. So, we have here numbers 8 plus 10. So, 8 and 10 is our addend. So, 10 plus 8 is equals to 18. And 18 is what we called the sum. Alright. So, now... Let's proceed on our first uh, topic or our first uh, measure of central tendency and it is called the mean. Are you familiar with average? Then if you're familiar, then you have now the uh, knowledge about the mean. So average and mean are the same. So when we, talk, when we say about the mean, it is the average of a group of numbers. So take this example. We have here a data set. 1, 8, 3, 2, and 6. So our mean here is 4. So how do we get that mean? So to answer that, uh, the mean is equal to the sum of all the values in the data set divided by the number of values in that in the data set. So we have here an equation that represents on how to get the mean. So x bar is equals to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus until x sub n over n. So uh, these are the numbers or uh, the numbers in the data set all over the value or the number of value of a data set. And now, I will be introducing to you on how to find the mean of group of a group of numbers. So, uh, I will be providing some steps on how to get the mean of a group of number. So, here's the first step. So, we need to add all the numbers. So, take this example. Uh, 8, 10, 18, 12, 8, 22, and 26. So, the step one is we need to add all the numbers. So here, 10 plus 18 plus 12 plus 8 plus 22 plus 26 is equals to 96. So the next step is we need to divide the sum by the number of addends. So in our example, we have to um, count the addends. So the number of addends we have here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 addends. Now that we have the sum, 96, and we have identified how many addends are in the set. So let's divide them. So 96 divided by 6. So 96 here is our sum. And 6 is the number of addends. So 96 divided by 6 will have an uh, we will get an answer of 16. So 16 is our is now our mean. So let's proceed on the second measure of central tendency, which is all about median. So uh, what is median? So, median is the middle number in a set of ordered numbers. So, let's have this example. 1, 3, 7, 10, and 13. So, the median here is 7. Based on the definition, median is the middle number. So, the middle number here is 7. Now, let's um, discuss on how to find the median of a group of numbers. Here is the first step. 
arrange the number in order from least to greatest. So let's have an example. 10, 18, 12, 8, 22, 26, and 32. Uh, step one, we have to arrange the numbers. So we have here 8, 10, 12, 18, 22, 26 to 32. Arranging them from least to greatest. Next step is we have to find the middle number. So we have here the arrangement of the numbers. And we have to find the middle number. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since there are 7, so our middle number here is 18. So, 18. And that number is our median. But what if a data set doesn't have an obvious middle number? Because in our example earlier, uh, the data set or the members of the data set is odd. But how can we uh, identify the median if a data set has an even members? So let's have this example one, two, three, four. If that's the case, we can actually use what we learned about the mean to help us out. If the data set has even number of members, then to find the median, we need to take the middle two numbers and calculate the mean or the average of the two. By doing that, we're basically figuring out what number would be the exact halfway between the two middle numbers, and that number will be our median. In the example 1, 2, 3, and 4, we need to take the middle two numbers. These are 2 and 3, and find their mean. We can obtain this by adding 2 and 3 and then dividing by 2. 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Even though the number 2.5 isn't actually a member of a data set, it is the median because it represents the middle of the data set and it splits the members into two equally sized groups. Alright, we are done in the mean and median. Now, let's proceed on the third and last measure of central tendency, which is all about the mode. So, what is mode? So, mode is the number that appears frequently in a set of numbers. So, take this example. We have here a data set. 2, 2, 3, 7, 10, and 13. So, the mode here is 2. Because 2 appears twice. So, based on the definition, a number that appears frequently in a set of numbers is what we call the mode. So, here's how to find the mode of a group of numbers. We have here the step 1. Step 1, we need to arrange the numbers in order from least to greatest. So, why do we need to, or, uh, to arrange them in order? So, that... Um, we can identify the mode of a group of numbers. So take this example, 21, 18, 19, 24, 18, and 18. So if we, got, we are going to arrange them, we have here 18, 18, 18, 19, 21, and 24. So the next step, find the number that is repeated the most. So in the example, uh, in the arranged numbers, uh, what is the number that is repeated the most? So we have here 18, 18, 18. So 18 appears thrice. So our mode here is the number 18. Okay, so now we'll have a seat work or practice exercise for you. We have here first, we need to find the mean. So here's the data or here's the following numbers. 26, 20, 33, 41, and 52. I will be giving you um, 15 seconds to answer this one.
All right, have you come up with an answer? So our mean here is 38. We will just simply add 26, 33, 41, 52, and divided by the number of values, which is 4. We will come up with the mean of, or the average of 38. So next, find the median. Here's a uh, following set of numbers. So 19, 11, 4, 8, and 29. I'll be giving you... 15 seconds to find the median. Alright, time is up. So, what is your answer? So, first we will go into Arrange these numbers into uh, ascending or from least to greatest. So 4, 8, 11, 19, and 29. So our median here, the center or the middle number is 11. So have, do you arrive with the same answer? Alright, thank you. Now we have here the third and last um, see twerk or third and last problem that you are going to find so we have to find here the mode so what is the mode of these following numbers 1, 2, 2, 9, 4, 9, 9, 10 so I'll be giving you 15 seconds again to um, find the mode of this group of numbers Alright, time is up. So, um, let's check if your answers have uh, is correct. So, we have uh, the first step in finding the mode is to uh, arranging the numbers from least to greatest. So, we have here 1, 2, 2, 4, 9, 9, 9, and 10. And then, the next step is to find the, uh, the most, uh, the, the number that is repeated the most so we have here 2 it is repeated twice and 9 repeated by thrice so what is our mode is it 2 or 9 so our mode here is 9 because 9 is um, appears the most all right that's it for our discussion and for the activity of this um, uh, concept or topic I, I will be giving you later after this class and also uh, I want you to uh, research for the, your assignment I want you to research uh, more about this mean median mode especially on uh, group and ungroup data so that's uh, that's it for today. I think that wraps uh, our lesson for today. Thank you so much. Again, I am your instructor, Aljon Byron. So, God bless us all. And thank you so much for attending this class. Thank you.